Now, our message today is God of second chance. Hallelujah. The God of second chances. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The God of second chances. Say my amen. So I've been largely an evangelist for the last two or three weeks. Today I want to assume the role, first of all, of a teaching priest. And then uh, evangelism. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Because after you've been saved, you still need to grow also in the Lord. Cindy, after you've been saved, you need to grow in the Lord. So today I assume the role of a teaching priest. And then evangelistic, as we finish, we bless the name of the Father in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. When you are created, God had a plan, a perfect plan for your life. Say my amen. When you are created, God had a perfect plan for your life. Now, this meditation, the main meditation as I was preparing for this message were these words of Jesus. Hallelujah. Watch and pray that you may not fall into temptation. Watch and pray that you may not fall into... And uh, you see, I was wondering, not wondering, just meditating upon it. Why would Jesus tell us not to watch and pray that we don't fall into problems? Why doesn't he tell us to watch and pray that we'll be blessed? God is good. But the thing that he repeated over and over when he was about to enter into his trial was watch and pray that you may not fall into temptation. Because Jesus knew and Jesus understood, hallelujah, that the only thing that the devil and his agents will use to move your star is temptation. Alijua, it is only temptation that the devil and his agents will use to move your star from its correct path. So the correct path of your star is that when you are born, God has a plan for you the way he had a plan for Jeremiah. So Jesus knows that if man will not be tempted, or every man will be tempted, if man shall not fall into temptation, then there is nothing that the devil has on you. You will be blessed in Jesus Christ's name. Say my amen. But then we cannot neglect the fact that Jesus Christ himself, him being sent here on earth to live, to die, to resurrect for us, was to give us a second chance. Hallelujah. We cannot neglect or overlook that fact. He came to give us that second chance. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But now, for you to be in a position where you need a second chance, you have gone through pain. Sindio, for you to be in a position where you need God to give you another chance, more, more often than not, you have gone through a season of pain. There is something that the devil has stolen. There is a beating that the devil has beaten you. There is something your adversary, the enemy has done that has hurt your life. For you to be in that position where you need a second chance in life. And that is what Jesus tells us. Though he came... That you may have life and have it in full. Though he came, hallelujah, to bring back our relationship, to, to take it back to the point where God intended it, he does not desire for us to fall because every fall into temptation comes with pain. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Comes with pain. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus Christ never overlooked the fact that we are men. And you see, Jesus so loves us. He is a friend, he is a master, and he understands us. One thing that really gives me heart is this encounter with Simon Peter just before everything went haywire. In this book of Luke chapter 22 and verse 31, 
Luke 22 and verse 31. You can just write it down and I read it for you. You can just note it for your Bible study. 22 verse 31, the Bible says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. God is good. Hallelujah. Verse 33, but he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you even unto death. And 34, the Bible says this, uh, Lord Jesus, Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you'll have denied three times that you know me. God is good. Same of flesh. The weakness of the flesh. This flesh. God is good. Hallelujah. So that scripture that I just mentioned is Luke 22, verse 39, the one that I started with. Jesus went out as usual to Mount Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, before he started to pray, on just reaching the place, he told them, eh, pray that you will not fall into temptation. Say my amen. God is good. Now, Matthew chapter 26 and verse 40. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 40. We were on, in Luke. Now, Matthew chapter 26 and verse 40. The Bible says this. He, he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not watch with me for one hour? Just one hour. God is good. There I got a revelation that Jesus used to pray, then break after one hour. Pray, break after one hour. Ukunyo kamaji, kakidogo, utafakari, sit and meditate, then stand up again and start praying. I got that revelation there. Hallelujah. Here, watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak, or the flesh is weak. Blessed be the name of the Father. Now, we are talking about second chances. I'm not uh, doing that evangelistic thing so much today. We bless the name of the Father. About second chances. Now, Jesus Christ appreciates the fact that we are men and we are human beings, and in us is weakness. We are so weak that in our original state, we were not able to to please God. And that is why we were given the Holy Spirit as a helper. Kivietu too, they tried, the Lord tried using the law. But then you know, by the time of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they had messed the law, which was supposed to help and guide the children of Israel. Now, at the point that our Master Jesus Christ goes, uh, dies, gives up his spirit, the Bible says that the temple curtain was torn into two and it was wide open and uh, that's an indication that we were all now allowed to get to the holy of holies and uh, at the ascension of our lord and savior jesus christ he tells the disciples tarry i am going to send you a helper i'm going to send you a counselor who will help you guide you teach you and it's called the holy spirit hallelujah and when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, that is when you will even be able to go and preach in power and witness of God in power. Sema, amen. amen. We are weak. Tell your neighbor you are weak. And now leave your neighbor alone. Tell yourself, I am weak. I am weak. I am weak. I need God. I need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. God is good. Now, one thing that I will tell you is that those who have ascended to the highest places of spiritual authority, one thing that is common with them is that the volume, the voice of their inadequacy was so loud and uh, their helpless dependence on the Holy Spirit is what catapulted them to take them to those realms of power and authority. He who is strong, he who will show the power of God mightily, one thing that is common is that they will not stand and, st you will not find them declaring authority, declaring power, declaring, you will find them so humble because we know that everything that we can achieve, everything we can do is simply purely by the grace of God, by the helping of the Holy Spirit. God is good. 
By God's grace, I do mass prayer. But I tell you, there is a higher level than mass prayer. There is a higher level than mass prayer. There is a level I am growing, and I'm never afraid to say that I'm growing. There's a level higher than mass prayer. There's a higher level than touch. There is a level where people like Maria Woodworth Etta walked in. She would preach in a place like this, and 25 miles away, somebody falls, somebody who's working in their chamber, and they would put them in carts, and uh, using cows and uh, donkeys, they would take them to the places of the meeting. You see, that is a grace in humility that gives you authority over, o o o over even entire regions. There is a higher level. God is good. But to ascend to those higher levels, one thing is that, is, that is common is that you must first of all know how ordinarily inadequate you are. The man of God, T.D. Jakes, uh, I heard him say that, that the feeling of inadequacy is what humility is crafted from. Humility is crafted from that feeling of inadequacy. You feel inadequate, humility is crafted, and when you're humble, remember the Bible says that God will exalt the humble. He will take down the proud, but he will exalt the humble. Say my amen. Declare I am weak. I need the help of God. So I have told you that when Jesus Christ tells his disciples, watch and pray that you may not fall into temptation, he does not talk about problem, trouble, etc. Because Jesus knew that if man will be able to overcome temptation, and you know there are various types of temptation, there are various types that I'm going to talk about, maybe mention them as we continue. Jesus knew that if you will be able to overcome temptation, then nothing can stop your destiny. And I pray that God today gives us, as he blesses us, he gives us authority to overcome temptation in Jesus Christ's name. And uh, the authority that uh, overcomes temptation is what we call purpose. Same purpose. It is purpose. You can say it is focus. Purpose and focus, they help us. Blessed be the name of the Father. Because you are able to look beyond purpose and focus helps you to look beyond the temptation that you are facing. Temptation comes to all of us. See, see what we are all tempted in the same way. The difference between those who stand and those who fall is the purpose and the focus in their heart. I know that this temptation is not just naked temptation. There is something that the devil is targeting when he's tempting me. God is good. But one thing also that, even as we, we now want to get well into the, into the message, one thing to overcome temptation, you must have a robust prayer life. You must have a steady, strong prayer life. You cannot overcome temptation by purpose and focus alone. Your prayer life must be on point. Because the conviction of the Holy Spirit must be there to help you to overcome temptation. If the Holy Spirit to tell you this thing is wrong. But the, the presence of the Holy Spirit or the activity of the Holy Spirit will be determined by, by your, your, your level of prayer engagement. Your commitment to prayer engagement. You want to pray, you want to be in the presence of God. God is good. There's a man of God who is called uh, Smith Wigglesworth. Now, Smith Wigglesworth has a record of raising 23 people from the dead, including his own wife. God is good. This man raised the wife from the dead. He, God had to come and tell him that, uh, this one, please, allow them to die. It is time. <laughs> Those who have read the story of Wigglesworth, they know. Now, this man called Smith Wigglesworth, uh, he, he's a God's general. You hear he raised, he raised 23 people from the dead. God is good. This man was so anointed that at one time they brought a child. I've told you this story many times before. They brought a child to the platform, and the platform was about the, the height of man. The height of a man. Eh? You climbed the stairs to get there. So they brought a child, three years old, who had not walked. The, the legs were wriggled like this. And instead of Smith Wiggles were praying, Smith kicked the boy and the boy landed on his feet and ran. 
That was Smith Wigglesworth. Hallelujah. Smith Wigglesworth had a friend who had stamps without, without the feet now, what he used to, to step on. They, he had a friend. They were friends for a long time. Then one day, Smith hears the Holy Spirit say, tell the man to go and buy shoes. And this guy does not have feet. He make a tiki hapo. It's cut at that point. And this guy goes to the shoe store. And at the shoe store, and at the shoe store, the guy asks for shoes. And the, the, the one selling asks him what size. Uh, then the guy looked at his feet and said, oh, sorry, we cannot help you. Then this guy says, size 8, black. And the moment this guy was given size 8, black, and, uh, and he put his stamps in those shoes, the feet grew. <laughs> that was Smith Wigglesworth, but that is not the purpose of the... I'm telling you that story to know how powerful he was. But now, Smith Wigglesworth was a plumber. Originally, he was a plumber. Now, at one time, during winter, he was in the UK. During winter at one time, there was so much business as a plumber, so much business, that his prayer life went down. Now, imagine somebody that would be so powerful. One day the wife comes from church late and Smith declares, I'm the man of this house. You cannot come to this house at this time. He became that cold. Because the wife had delayed in church. So the wife came out through the front door and came and entered through the back door. And the wife came in laughing. She was called Polly. And Polly laughed and laughed and laughed and it hit Smith how he had died in prayer. You see, even he, he who will walk in the greatest dimensions of power and anointing, if your prayer life goes down, you will find yourself becoming man, ordinary man again. So for you to be able to overcome, I've given you that example, so that you, you know, if, if, even at your level, or even if you grow in the spirit, your spiritual stability will depend on the robustness of your prayer life. Your spiritual stability will depend on the robustness, the stability of your prayer life. God is good. You cannot overcome temptation without a consistent prayer life. And uh, the man of God, Prophet Joshua, used to say that great men must simply have great habits. Daniel prayed three times a day. How many times do you pray in a day? What times do you pray in a day? And now, covenantal prayers are the most steady or are the most helpful in maintaining a steady prayer life. Covenantal prayers are most helpful in maintaining a steady prayer life. I mean, I pray by covenant. I pray at a certain time. It is most helpful. When you make a time that you set apart as a time for prayer, and maybe even a, a particular place that you set apart for prayer, it will help you to be consistent in your prayer life. I know there are some of us here who love God so much. There are some of us who have stars that are meant to be so big. But the thing that the devil is, uh, has been fighting and so able to put you down is uh, your prayer life. Because when you are not having a prayer life, you, know, you will not be sensitive. Hallelujah. You will not be sensitive. And at times, the sensitivity, the lack of sensitivity, the loss of it may come even to a businessman. Let's say a businessman. God can send you something that is packaged badly. It's not packaged well, but it has profit. If you are sensitive in the spirit, you will feel in your heart that this thing does not look profitable, but let me go. Let me try. Because you are moved by the Holy Spirit. But if you are in carnality, if you are carnal, you are, your spiritual sensitivity is not up because your prayer life is down. Opportunities will pass you. You will judge by the eye. But if you judge by the eye, God many times will not be there and you may find yourself in loss. God is good. God is good. We are talking about second chance. Hallelujah. <laughs> we are talking about second chance. Hallelujah. So that is a foundation. We are, that is a foundation that though we talk about second chance today, though we are going to pray, we are going to pray for miracles. After we pray for these miracles, maintenance is very important. And now, your connection with the source of power, the Holy Spirit, your connection with God, with Jesus who prayed for you, is what will help you not to need a miracle every day in one particular area of life. 
I may need a miracle today to get a husband or to get a wife. When God provides that, let me, let me maintain that by my prayer. Let me maintain that by prayer relationship. And let me now start asking for miracle in another area of life. I want a miracle because the Bible says, I will, my, the works of my hands shall be blessed. We hold hands with my wife, with, with your husband, and you pray. You are looking for something else. When money starts to come in, now you trust God. God, now we want to have children. You start praying for children. You start blessing your children before they come on up. You start praying for the children. Was equal to children for the sake. You see, if you, you are at a different level, but not going and seeking miracles for the same thing every time. That is not proper for a child of God. What you have been given, you can maintain. Watch by watching and praying so that you do not find yourself falling into temptation. If you need a second chance today, where did the first chance go? Some form of temptation took it away from us. Now the temptation may have been to our ancestors. And so we are looking for a second chance. We want God to help us to break something that is generational. And the second chance we may be needing, may also, we may also have lost the chance because of our own falling. Some of my own falling. My own falling. God is good. Hallelujah. Now, we are talking about second chance. And I've, I've started to talk about why we lose the first chance in the first place. Now, I'd like to go point by point by God's grace. And uh, the subtopic that I'm going to touch on is reasons of failure amongst children of God. I'm not into business with the world. Children of God. I told you today I assume the role of a teaching priest, and I bless the Lord for so far. Reasons for failure amongst children of God. You can put a bracket like me. No, not like Jomba, like you, you. Hallelujah. <laughs> not like Jomba, like you. Jomba is dealing with his own. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jomba is dealing with his own. Hallelujah. Number one reason why people fail the most common the blanket of it is what we call ignorance ignorance a simple word for it will be lack of knowledge number one reason why many people fail is what we call ignorance God is good so lack of knowledge lack of intelligence Hallelujah. Let me call it lack of knowledge because this one, that, uh, this ignorance and uh, knowledge you acquire. You understand? You acquire knowledge. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. The Bible says this, that my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Then there's a, uh, those things that indicate speech. Because you have rejected knowledge, I have also rejected you as my priest. Because you have ignored the law of, ignored the law of your God, I will also ignore you as children. Say my amen. amen. Hallelujah. Ignorance. God is good. The Bible says that my people perish. Whose people? My people. The Lord's people. Whose people? Some of the Lord's people. The Lord's people. They perish due to lack of knowledge. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, my mentor, Prophet T.B. Joshua used to say, Bible reading and prayer must go hand in hand. God is good. Now, I've studied this one. In the body of Christ, the people that have worst lives... I've discovered this one. I've been in ministry for now almost 15 years. The people that I've discovered that, that suffer worst things in the kingdom of God are prayer warriors who are not Bible readers. Prayer warriors who do not put value into the study of the word. Because something that happens... If you set yourself to pray and to pray and to pray, 
you are harming the kingdom of God. Now, the Bible is a manual. It's like a manual for living out our Christian lives. Now, if you pray and pray and pray, but you do not have knowledge that comes from the knowledge of the scripture, the devil will attack you. And many times, the devil attacks children, well-meaning children of God, with visions. Many times, the greatest attack to prayer people, if you, people, what were kuomba sana, you pray so much, but you don't invest your time in seeking the word of God. It is visions that the devil will use as an attack. See, I got born again, and as a young pastor, people used to come with visions. And I said, God, hey, which one is this one? Out one on anger, son. I don't see anything, but they see and they see and they see and they see. And I was always, eh? Eh? I'll watch up. Hallelujah. And some of the visions would come to pass and some not. Then as I grew, I came to realize, hallelujah, that this thing, this thing of vision, it can be a blessing, but it can also be the worst attack to a Christian. It can be the worst attack to a Christian. God is good. I have had people who you were born again, you got married, then you're living with your wife and at, at a point in time it comes a place you see a vision that this is not your wife. Hajakosa, not into adultery, that the Bible says that in adultery that is you're allowed to separate, no mistake, but you just see a vision that has been shown. Hallelujah. I have handled cases there's, I remember the, there's a case of a lady where the marriage was broken because the prayer warriors, prayer warriors told the, the husband that your wife has a spirit that is causing you loss. And when they told her that, on that, it was during the, the week, then come Friday, their house was uh, attacked and everything was stolen in that house. Bada kuambiwa na ombezi kumba bibi yako ndiyo shita. He's the one with the spirit of loss. Blessed be the name of the Father. God is good. You know, it is when I am well acquainted with the word that I can use the word to reason. Hallelujah. That if my wife has something that is bad and me I have something that is good, if, why, why, why is her badness uh, greater than my good? The light in me should be able to suppress the bad in her. So if I... If I, if I if I push her physically, what of the person that is going to come? How sure am I that they are not darkness? But those, such kind of reasoning will come only when you invest your time to read and meditate upon the word. You see, meditation, there are many of you here that are well-meaning. Some of you are even doing professional jobs well, well. But now when you start to talk, the, the, the magnitude, how you magnify Satan tells me that this one is not a meditator in the word of God. Hallelujah. The witches have done this. They have sent something from the sea. And uh, man of God, pray for me very well. Man of God, don't. In fact, I'm sending my seed. Pray for me. Fight for me this battle. You see, this person is so much aware of darkness. And that one will come because you don't read or you don't meditate upon the word of God. Because when I read and study the word of God, it will tell me that he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. If these people are attacking me very, very well, then I should look for Jesus Christ because he's not in me. Because he's not in me. God is good. Now, there are two types of knowledge. There's the spiritual knowledge that will help you nav navigate uh, spiritual oceans or spiritual seas. Spiritual knowledge. This one, the foundation number one, is from the Bible. God is good. I hate, I've been saying it so much, I hate the version of Christianity today. The version of Christianity really magnifies the man of God. When the man of God is simply called a shepherd. God is good. Supposed to lead you to food, supposed to lead you to water, but you eat for yourself and you drink for yourself. You are supposed to be powerful. But now your power, and I've told you about my life, I have told you the first deliverance that I did, I did as a sound man, four months into salvation. The now deliverance in a church setting happened less than a year. The first healing, somebody with blocked ears, happened less than one year into salvation. And the thing that spurred me, hallelujah, is that I read the scripture, I read the Bible, and I didn't have uh, Christians to influence me. 
I was not so much mingled in Walikuwa and Yogopa. You know, the saved people, they were afraid of me because of the way I just look with red bloodshot eyes na kichwa imesimama dread hivi zinakaa hivi those si zile zimeanguka zile zimesimama hivi ukitembea tena unakaa kama shetani mwenyewe so the christians were not there to interfere with me so when i read the bible i accepted it as a fool nilichukua kama mjinga the bible says that this sense shall accompany them that believe oh, 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 oh. jesus am i a believer or not <laughs> God is good. Am I a believer or not? And you pray. You pray. You read. This kind can only come out by fasting and prayer. Kwevo pepo ikienda ifike advanced level. It is fasting and prayer that will give you authority to handle it. I read as a fool, accepted as a fool, and power manifested to a fool. The Bible says that he comes, that the blind will see, and those who see to become blind. I was blind read it blindly, accepted it, and that is how power came. Mimi si kupokea power by impartation. I never received an anointing by impartation. The power came by reading the Bible as a fool. Reading it as a fool. Hallelujah. God is good. I knew, I studied the implications of sin, the implications of giving, the weights of giving from reading the Bible myself. Have I been tempted after that? Many times, because I am man. God is good. Now, the process of sanctification is dying to sin more and more and living for righteousness more and more. Now, there is the spiritual knowledge that needs to increase. Please, make it a habit of reading your Bible. This book that you have, this scripture, the Bible that you have, therein are secrets. Now, something that I will tell you that many, maybe you don't know, that the biggest witch doctors, you will find them with the Bible, you will find them with the Quran. Look for a doga, he was delivered from Atibi Joshua's ministry and taken to Togo. In his shrine, he had the books of Moses, the diabolic books, then he had the Bible. And he said that when, when you came to him, he would ask you, are you Muslim or are you Christian? You say you are Christian, he will take your Bible. Get something here, give you wrong revelation, make for you charm. Hallelujah. That is how powerful this book is. Tell your neighbor, read it. Meditate. The, you know, reading the Bible and meditate, one thing that it will help us, getting knowledge and meditating upon it, one thing it will really help you is dealing with fear. Because this thing, the Bible, from the beginning to the end, it talks about the greatness of God and the big things that God has done and the promises of God which are backed up by proofs of what he has done already in the scripture. One thing it will help you is take away fear. Itoe woga ndani ya moyo wako. You see, a Christian who is not operating in fear, but operating in faith, in the name of God and in his power, that Christian is not easy to shake. God is good. And I will tell you, that is one that is the greatest advantage we got from being mentored by prophet B. joshua i told you power never came as a point of as as impartation for me power came by reading the scripture believing it as a fool and power began to move blessed be the name of the lord but now this aspect that the revelation that i got from prophet B. joshua to disregard fear i learned that nothing can come to me except that which god has allowed and if God has allowed it, there is something he's saying. He used to say, God is always saying something. God is good. Have I missed a point? God could be saying, you have missed a point. You need to come back. This is punishment. God could be saying, you need to strengthen your desire for God. God could be saying, you need to be reformed for a better position in life. God could be saying, you need to be reformed for a better position in Christ Jesus. But in situation, God is always saying something. That means for me, when a situation comes to me, I never address the devil. I address God my father. Because if God said that that situation is not coming, it would not have come to me. So I don't address the devil when I'm talking about my situation, but rather I plea with God, my Father, in brokenness and humility. Oh, Jesus Christ, what are you saying? What would you have me do? Lord Jesus Christ, this thing is inconsistent with your will and your word for me. God, this thing is inconsistent with your promises for this season. Help me. Where was God when Shetani was doing it? 
it, that situation is there because God allowed Shetani to get it there. So what is God saying? Hallelujah. So you never find me giving credit to my enemy. You never find me giving credit to the devil. If the Lord has allowed it, there is something that God is saying through that situation. That one is the product of reading, the product of meditation. In Jesus Christ's name. I know that Paul was arrested. I know that Paul was arrested. And the purpose of his arrest, being thrown to prison, was to get him to Rome to preach even to the emperor. It was not unto death, unto the glory of God. I know that Lazarus, he was sick and became sicker and sicker and sicker. And I know that God was not helping him because the testimony that God wanted was not healing, but a greater testimony, which is resurrection. I know my trouble can take time for God to allow people to see it. What wengine wa yone. So that they will help me to testify when God comes. But that is the product of meditation. Hallelujah. The product of meditation. The, uh, you read the scripture. Let the Holy Spirit have something to work on. When you say vision, vision will kill you. Vision has killed very, very big, well-meaning Christians. Vision killed William Branham. Vision killed Branham. The greatest prophet to ever exist outside the scripture. Greatest one. God is good. Hallelujah. Prophet T.B. Joshua was complete as a prophet. He was complete. The healing, the deliverance, the ETC. But prophet Kuona Hivi, nobody has gone near where Branham went. <laughs> Nobody has gotten to near where Branham went. Nobody has gotten near. Branham would, the whole church, like this one, would make a line. And he, he prophesies to you one at a time, telling you the town that you come from, the street, that, the name of your street, the name of your house. God is good. The whole church like this one. But he stopped. Those who have studied him know he was good so long as Gordon Lindsay was there, always telling him to read the word. When they separated with Gordon Lindsay, he stopped reading the word, started depending on vision. He died in an accident. And he died in an accident, but at the point of his death, he resurrected his wife. But he died. And a message came two years before that he was going to die because he had diverted. Ujumbe ulikuja, that you're going to die in an accident because you have diverted. You are, you are taking the people of God astray. Imagine you become as big as prophet T.B. Joshua, then you start t teaching people on vision alone. You, the Lord will harvest you. God is good. Now, knowledge. This one, I mentioned it. I've talked about spiritual knowledge. Now, the knowledge of this world is very important. The knowledge of this world. God is good. The Holy Spirit can teach you. The Holy Spirit can teach you can bless you, can gift you. The Holy Spirit can gift you how to make hair, how to make chairs. God is good. But you see, you can make the best chairs, but if you do not know how to market those chairs, you can still find yourself sleeping hungry. The, reading from this scripture again, the Bible tells me that at one time, Jesus sent his disciples, 70 of them, he sent them two to to cities where he was yet to preach. Unalewa? He sent them to cities where he was yet to preach. Roadshow. Kona moto meshi ya mepakwa mafuta. Hata kuja hapa na mutajionea nyenye wenyewe. The people were expectant. So Jesus Christ used publicity. You understand? So you, 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 you want to pray alone. But now, the best way to learn the techniques of business, you will learn them from those that God has gifted in this world. There are those that God has gifted with business management skills. There are those that God has gifted in different areas that can be beneficial to you as a man. We say, I, repeat, I use this word a lot, let the Holy Spirit have something to work with. Learn, increase some knowledge, and a college. It is good to go to the college. It is good to go to school if you can. These short courses, these seminars, now we have YouTube. Yego learned to throw the javelin on YouTube. Sell you javelin on YouTube. 
and became a world champion, went and, and went all over, all over the world, competing in the javelin, throwing the javelin because of learning from YouTube. He improved himself, gained knowledge from YouTube. YouTube is not only to look for things to laugh. When you want to pray, your spirit is corrupted. You can add knowledge, increase knowledge. If you go to my computers, just get to my conf the, the office here, you will find things open. You will find tabs that are there here. Go home to my laptop. You will find tabs. You, will find, you may find T.D. Jakes here. You find Joshua Selman here. You find me Bonke here on this other tab. Blessed be the name of the Father. Then you find the Bible on another tab. Use technology. Advance. For, for me, I am a preacher. So my advancement, I will listen to preachers. I will get a word from this one. At times I, I listen, Nisishike Kitu. I go to another one. But that is me increasing knowledge. God is good. And especially, I listen to people who interest me in particular fields. If I want to... To read about church management, it is I will listen to Paul and Eche. He has the greatest auditorium in the world. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I, I, there's a man that I, I love, uh, I, I love Bishop Oyedepo. God is good. Growing from down and growing, growing as a, as a minister. I, I will listen to Oyedepo because him, he has, man, he has gone there very well, greater than those who inspired him. When I want to study evangelism, I will shut up every tab and open Bonke. And I will listen to Bonke when I want to study evangelism. When I want to go into the prophetic, hallelujah, blessed be the name of the Father. There's Prophet Kakande is here. Prophet Tibi Joshua, God is good. Then there is Branham, God is good. At times, you know, I look, I, I, <laughs> whenever I think that, that I'm anointed, I go and look for Branham. Then I, I live there like a dog who is coming from war. This is Jehovah, but watch it to Songa Songa, but Songa Songa. God is good. They inspire you and they challenge you not to get into the temptation of big manism. Ah, I'm big. I listen to them and I look at them, and it helps me and it inspires me and it shall bless me in Jesus' name. The thing like now managing the TV station, the TV station that we are running now. I will tell you the truth. A lot of uh, the knowledge that I use in managing that TV station came from uh, the man that even most of you don't like, called Donald Trump. I studied him before he became a president. His books, I studied him. The presentation and everything, come and I will tell you, I got it from either Think Like a Champion, I Think and Grow Rich, The Art of the Deal. I will tell you. The management, how so I may look unconventional in many ways, and but you know, Trump is very unconventional. <laughs> if he's my teacher, I'll be unconventional. Many because you, how can you run a TV station when you don't, you, you have not even kept money in the, you've not kept money in the account that you're starting with? The see, Pesa Ikoko account, blessed be the name of the Father, and, and you're not going to manipulate people. God is good. There's knowledge here, knowledge here that will help you. Blessed be the name of the Father. The musicians, the, the people who play, hallelujah. You know, many of them have come to, to request for places to play, to, for a chance to play here. Now, Skizanga, even an our affair, and our home. But the difference with this one is not that they are gifted, but they have polished their gift. God is good. That they are, I know there are some of them you see here for one month or two weeks and you see them disappear. God is good. Polish yourself. Have something for the Holy Spirit to use. God is good. When you tell God, bless the works of your, my hands, you have worked on the works of your hands, you have gotten some level, hallelujah, some level of authority, some level of... Uh, of professional accuracy the thing that you're doing is good you have worked on it god is good and uh, now some people will say oh i wish i had a guitar and i read the book uh, of a man called robert kiyosaki i know many of you read it uh, rich dad poor dad when he said that uh, when you say oh, oh i cannot do it your mind stops thinking but you ask yourself how can i do it your mind starts thinking Ukibaki na ukasema kumefungana imeshindikana you stop thinking but when how what can i do what can i do even this day there are times i think until i get headache and i know this is not an attack i've been using 
pushing my mind too much. What can I do? Look for an inspiration, something, something, something. But you hear, this came from a book of a man who is not even born again. But he has studied the financial systems. He's a pro and he's a master. That one line, when you say it is impossible, you stop thinking. When you say, hallelujah, what can I, how can I do it? You start the end, you will be amazed at what is in your mind. Grow. God is good. Grow. Grow. Hallelujah. I'll be sending books to the church groups. Eh? God is good. I've received 64 new books to study. 64. God is good. Hallelujah. So I've said, number one reason why people fail is ignorance, lack of knowledge. Number two, fear. This one, I will go rush, rush. Number two is fear. God is good. Now, fear, in the spiritual sense, this is a temptation that magnifies your enemy in your head. It magnifies your enemy in your head. Now, the Bible says that faith comes by and hearing by the word of God. Say my amen. Now, fear will be built or be reduced in you based on what you are exposing yourself to on a day-to-day -day basis. It will be built or it will diminish based on what you feed your ears, your eyes, your spirit with on a day-to-day -day basis. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He who does not fill himself with materials that build fear will have faith. Say my amen. And I've told you fear is where the devil magnifies your enemy in your mind. God is good. Hallelujah. Sema, there is a way out. Sema, there is a way out. Sema, there is always a way out. There is always a way out. The purpose of the scripture was to build our faith in God. You want to get pregnant, you have a husband. You are facing barrenness. Remember that this God gave a baby to somebody who had not even slept with a man. Amen? That is what I've exposed myself to. But if you go and you are on the internet, reasons for barrenness, possibility of having a child after 30. <laughs> if that is the material you expose yourself to, hallelujah, sense evidence will be greater than your faith. Sense evidence will, will dictate your faith. Sense will dictate your faith greater than the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In fact, when you discover your barrenness, then you hear that one of your aunts died without a child. So, whoa, he's generational. This thing is generational. Quisha. God is good. Hallelujah. You forget that the Bible says that you are a blessed one through Abraham. You are a heir of Abraham when you accepted the Christ covenant. You accepted Jesus Christ. Your family life should cease and the promise of Abraham should work over you. Fear. Expose yourself. This one again. Expose yourself to the world and, and, and now really try to take down the unbelief that you expose yourself to. Let me tell you, the internet is so powerful. It is so powerful. This is something that I discovered not long ago. Uh, something that I discovered not long ago about what you expose yourself. Now we're talking about the innocent, the, the internet. You see, whenever I saw anything nude or naked, I used to run. But whenever I saw somebody throwing a jab, Nikangumi Kamerushu up, I'd say, Kongamutu. And I laugh and I say, You know, then I came to realize that whenever I see such things, my voice would start to go up in the house. My voice would start to go up in the house. 
Wait, wait, wait. I, I, you find making a noise to children, making noise to my wife, then I said, mm. Hallelujah. So this one I did experimental. Then it came to a point that I discovered this thing and uh, hmm, I said that, you know, there are times you make noise and you realize that this is not me. This is not my nature. Because what you expose yourself, I have exposed myself to that one, you find that the violent something comes over you. I said that this one is not my nature. Mm. Then I, I thank God for intelligence. I say, is, could it be that thing that I watched? Then it goes a time, then I find, ah, they bullied the wrong student. Then I watch that bullying wrong student, that, that student hit them with a kick here like a donkey and say, don't bully people, don't bully people. Yes, don't bully people. Then again, after that season, I start finding myself raising my voice again in the house. Hallelujah. And that is powerful. Kunam Tuapata, that one is a revelation for you. Then you know what God did? God sent somebody for me to pray for. Nikamuombe, ombe, ombe. Holy Ghost fire. Then the Holy Spirit comes. You, you, have a, you have a spirit of violence in you. The Holy Spirit shows me. And the Holy Spirit tells me, stop, tells me to tell this person, you, you like watching fighting movies. Actually, I never watch movies. I don't watch movies at all. I don't watch movies. But this one, this one, you're scrolling. It's a 40 seconds thing, something. That was time ago, not now. I, then when I pray for this person, I came. Now, what is the relationship with these people fighting on TV and you becoming, having a violent spirit? And this person now, she sees people fighting even in her dream. The devil is becoming crafty. Take care. God is good. Now, if you ex that is, is exposing yourself to violence. If you expose yourself now to things that work on your fear, yako ni kusoma statistics. You will study statistics. What are the chances of becoming a millionaire after 40? <laughs> God is good. If those are the things you go and study, you will live in fear. Kwisha. If my chances are this, nakonza kusoma, I didn't study, I don't have anybody in government, let me just be content and live my life. The devil is a liar. Say my amen. amen. If cancer, you get an attack of sickness and disease. Somebody like me, if I get the attack of sickness and disease, what will come to me if it is a child, I remember the first child that I pray for. I never forget the first child that I pray for. Hallelujah. He was a small boy called Christian. And I prayed for him and he got healed instantly, was not eating and what, and started to eat. When I get the report of sickness, that is what I'll think about. When I get the report of HIV AIDS, I remember the first person I prayed for in 2009. She came with her medical report and my heart started to beat. Guy. So they could have let me to grow a bit before bringing HIV AIDS. Then I prayed, I remember the prayer. I told God, I don't have the power, I don't have the anointing, but I have to pray for her because she comes. Lord, if you can, please heal her. Nika muacha. Then she comes after some weeks and tells me, man of God, I went to test again. This one is not ARV. I said, but I, man of God, I, I went to test again and uh, they told me it's not there. And I went to another VCT. I don't know if the VCTs are still there nowadays. And I, they told me it's gone. So I will remember those ones. But if, if what you have exposed yourself is sense, you know how many weeks it takes for somebody to die of cancer? If, they are, if you are told that you have a tumor, you start dying. You start counting the weeks that you know. Faith will not work because you have not exposed yourself to faith. Blessed be the name of the Father. Expose yourself to Jabez, the man who was named Pain because he was born in pain. And he prayed and there was a transformation in his life. Blessed be the name of the Father. Expose yourself to scripture. Like this woman who gave two cents, and thus two cents that she gave. Jesus called everybody, Kujeni Mwone Mutu Ametoa Zaidia Watuote. Hallelujah. And then you know that when I have little, my little, when I give it in faith, can cause heaven to know me. And even if heaven knows me, if heaven identifies with my giving, my blessing is coming. It is not the, um, a lot that I have. It was what I have to give with all of my heart. So you know, I not need to give in fear. I give in faith because God recognizes faith. Say my amen. 
Expose yourself to the correct things. It will help you build faith in you. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Another thing that causes people to fail, disobedience. This one, disobedience. This is what? Now, this one, I'll not talk much about it. You can just go over the internet and look at my messages. For two days, I've talked about Jonah. Jonah, a prophet of God, does not sleep with any woman, does not uh, do any corruption, but God sends him, go to Nineveh and save those people. Then Jonah says, me, I will not go to Nineveh. I'm going to Tashish. In Tashish, he's going opposite to the direction that God has sent him. When you are going opposite to the direction of God, you are acting in disobedience. The grace of God that was to sustain you, it was put in your journey of obedience. It is not in your journey of disobedience. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Your blessings for protection was put when you are walking in the path of obedience. So there he is, the sea becomes bad. He cannot pray for the sea to come down because he's at the wrong place at the wrong time. He's thrown into the water. It is just by grace that God gives him a second chance that he gets himself inside a well. Inside the well, he came to his senses. And when God sends him, he was willing to obey. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, there is obedience in the scripture. If the Bible says that tithe is what is used to, to release the angels of your protection, it is tithe that will release your protection. Not prayer, not fasting. It is just tithe. Obedience. So some people you will find, because the devil is an accuser of brethren, you will find that the accusation that he uses to tie your finances is from disobedience. Ask your neighbor, are you a tither? Are you a tither? Now for me, let me tell you how I counsel myself to become obedient. God is good. I normally remind myself that God is not growing old. I'm growing old. I don't have time to, to waste. When I discovered it from the word, let me try it immediately. Because if I start having excuses, God is not getting old. I'm the one getting old. Hallelujah. And everything that makes for, everything that makes for my good life here on earth, he is pegged to my obedience. The more I obey, you know, I obey, I obey, my blessings come. I obey, my blessings come. Now, if I already know it is in the word, but I choose to live in disobedience, mm, it is me wasting my time. God is good. And that is why for things like tithe, I normally tell people, okay, you've not been paying your tithe. How prosperous are you? Are you satisfied with your life? If you're not satisfied, when you're not paying, try paying. And don't just do it once, right? Make it a life. After a while, let me tell you the thing. Let me tell you the truth. God will prove to you that this thing works. Actually, I will tell you, Many of you know the things that I've gone through. Many of you know the, the things, the betrayals that I've gone through, the battles that I've gone through. You know, the, the, hey, at times they come from all over. But one thing I tell you, obedience speaks for me. Obedience speaks for me. There are times where you say, God, it is finished. It's now just you then you find God coming into the picture and giving you redemption in a way that you never imagined. But the way of the disobedient, God is good, the way of the disobedient is when trouble comes and nothing is there to fight for you, you will crumble. If you want to grow, what you've learned as an instruction, obey. Tell your neighbor, obey. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you see, some of us, because anytime you pray, I've taught you before, that promotion does not come after prayer. Promotion comes after testing. When you pray, you want God to bless your finances. God bless my finances. God at times will just say, give you, send you a hundred. And God looks at you. Is ten Bob going to church? Or you squander it all. Hey, then say, Jeva Asante, Asante, umenikujia. Hey, umekuja, Jeva, ukutumana. At least nimekula nimeshiba. But you know, in heaven already, the mark M is on your head. Thief, muizi. 
is already on your head. So if I cannot trust this one with a hundred bob to give me ten, ten bob, shall I trust him with a million to give me a hundred thousand? Lie. At times you pray, financial breakthrough, financial liberation. God will test you with something that does not even look like a test. And say so this one is good at prayer, but the obedience level is still down. A Christian needs to grow in every area. As I grow in prayer, I grow in my fight over temptation. I grow in my obedience. Say my amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Another reason why the children of God fail is what we call rebellion. Say my rebellion. Amen. Rebellion. Obedience, disobedience, and uh, rebellion are different. Disobedience may be something you do once, but when you make it a habit, now it comes to that place we call it a rebellion. Say my rebellion. God is good. Now, uh, one time ago, there was a, a man of God who was caught into child support thing, eh? With a lady he had gotten pregnant, a lady he had gotten pregnant, eh? and this lady was not even born again, and they met in a bar. He's a big man of God, I know you know the story. I will not go so much into it. And now, <laughs> God is good. Among the comments was this thing somebody said that God does not ashamed his generals at once. But when the generals become stiff-necked in their rebellion, God exposes them. God is good. That was a comment. Hallelujah. But now, true to this comment, I had met somebody before who had, who had uh, in the past, she came and now, when she was giving me this story, the mature person was telling me that uh, this so-and-so, I never used to believe in you, men of God. So and so, who is a big man of God, I found him at my friend's house. And he bought that friend of mine a house for 50 million. And I was so angry, I went out and got stone and broke all the windows of his car. That was before the scandal now that came to be in public. And say, hey, God forbid. I found a way to cut that story because thou shalt not live, touch my anointed one. I cut that story. But when it came to happen, I came, yeah. Then that comment that the Lord will expose you when it becomes a bad habit. Uh, that is not for people like me. Oh. People like me, if I try, I die. In anointing, no, you're an evangelist. <laughs> That is for evangelists and preachers there. But man of God in anointing, whoa. <laughs> Personally, you come, you just see long fingers strangle you very, very well. That is rebellion. Now, have you read the story of the sons of Eli? Can I read you something here? First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 22. The Bible says this. Now, Eli... First Samuel chapter 2, verse 22. Now Eli, who was old, heard about everything his sons were doing to Israel, Israel and how they slept with the women who, sat, who served at the entrance of the tent of meeting. God is good. That is a temptation to us. Hallelujah. The women who serve at the tent of meeting. And so he said to them, Why do you do such things? I hear from all from all the people about these wicked deeds of yours. No, my sons, it is not a good report I hear spreading among the Lord's people. If a man sins against God, God may mediate for him. But if man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? His sons, however, did not listen to his father's rebuke. For the Lord, it was the Lord's will to put them to death. Yahweh. God is good. I, this is one of the important points that I speak about today as children of God. Now, God is so merciful today that when you sleep with somebody, most likely the result of that thing will not be seen. But you see, I read this last line where the Bible says that uh, they did not listen to their father's rebuke for it was the Lord's will to put them to death. They sinned and they sinned and they sinned, but the time the father is coming to talk to them, God is already angry and God has already made his mind to kill them, that they're going to die. Hallelujah. Now this one is a message to us. The, the body of Christ, the children of God. If you find that your conviction for a particular sin is dead, 
you need to retreat. Your conviction to a particular sin has died. It means you are now in rebellion, Pugulo. Please take a retreat. You slept with somebody nobody saw, the man of God did not see. You hear what was told here? The Lord had determined to put an end to them. If you find yourself you're fornicating, you can fornicate and you come to church and speak in tongues. Your end may be near. Ama ile kiboko inakuja, radi, badu inapaku anointing while state. The, the destruction that is coming, God is good. And this one I told you, to be able to overcome temptation, it is good to have a prayer life. If you Kenya, I, I, I speak against it every single service day. You Kenya kutegemea the anointed man of God. This one is not, will not profit you. It will not profit you at all. When conviction dies, God is good. Rebellion, hallelujah. You see, you get to a place, and you know, unfortunately, at times the devil will allow you to There are things that are going well. You say, ah, they are saying that fornication is bad. But I even did it now in my job. I've even been promoted. These men of God of these days, they just say these things to scare us. But <laughs> uh, the, 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 the crocodile to bite you, his teeth are still getting strength. They're powering the teeth. When it bites you, it bites you well, well. God is good. Now, when I was reading this one, I went to some Nigerian movies. If they came to me, the movies that I used to watch, Nigerian movies. And the Nigerians used to portray this movie. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Where you find somebody, you know there are things that happen when you're in disobedience in secret. When the Lord removes favor from you, it can either hit you once or it can hit you gradually and you get to a place of getting finished and finished completely. Hallelujah. I remember the man of God who, was, who had been invited to another country at, in a movie now. Go and preach in Zambia. Then this man is sleeping with women, Kisirisiri Hapo. Then these people, well, these people, because they are a serious church, they pray and they pray and they pray. And when they are praying, they feel in their hearts. They start having feeling, let us not call this man of God. Not even a dream or vision, but their heart just dies. Favor with this man of God goes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This man is in rebellion. Now, when they tell him that they have counseled, this man, instead of looking at himself, he still rises up, the man of God. Ah, it is their loss. It is their loss. I would have impacted those people. I've impacted their congregation very well. It is their loss. <laughs> The guy died in an accident, to cut the long story short, in that movie. Rebellion, jichunge. Let me use those words and go to another point. If you find yourself not feeling convicted in a particular area or a particular scene, you need to retreat. Your destruction could be near. Or it could be the reason of your destruction now. I know, we know what happens. You kiss this Jokomino, you don't like the, the breath. You kiss this one, you don't like the shape of his teeth. You, <laughs> you kiss this one, you don't like his hug, but in church you're there. Eliporo. You are there. You, you. God is good. Man. God does not need your testimony from man. God sees you for himself. God, the devil does not need your testimony from man. The devil does not need anybody to report you. He's the one who brings temptation. He knows it and he's actually the one who takes the report to heaven. I'm a fanya See, he's called the accuser of brethren. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And that point, let it save even one person. If you find yourself, you are lying. I have met servants of God. I have met, there's a singer that I met some, some time ago. Jamani Muongo. The guy, the conscience of not lying died. Hallelujah. 
The man texts me a message, man of God, I want to see you. I, please tell me where you are. Please me, tell me where you are. Please tell me where you are. Then I finally tell him where to, he came to that place where we are, the Palachini. And the guy comes. And when I bring people, people are now coming to greet him. Yes, I'm so and so. And man of God is my great friend. In fact, he has been looking for me for so long. And I decided now to come and on. He needs a massam puligani. What kind of one? But he's a praise and worship leader in a big ministry. Uneza Shanga. God is good. You find that you've died. You unadanga nyanga. You your lying has become like a hobby. If you are not being convicted when you lie, the devil could be finishing the sharpening of that sword to chop off your head. Because sin, if we are with the Holy Spirit, holistic conviction must be part of us. When I lie, when I step aside, I must feel something in my heart. Ah, even if you buy it. When you look at a woman lustfully, when you leave that place, you, conviction should come to you. But if you don't feel convicted, you may have gotten to that point of early sons. It is not okay to sleep around. If you're not getting convicted, it is not okay. Hallelujah. Even whatever, whatever, the fondling and the, 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 the king, or what they call them, is not fine. God is good. I don't stand here at a point as a judge. God is good. I am man like you. God is good. Peter next to Jesus messed. God is good. We all fail in particular areas. But I tell you, if you see us still standing, they are still healed. The, the growth of the anointing is visible. Miracles and signs are happening. Let me tell you, one thing that is there is that when we fall, we don't lie on the ground, but we use it to go into God more. You find yourself umedanganya, and I've told you this before. You find yourself that you've told a lie. That is recipe. Oh, Jesus. This stomach of mine. This stomach of mine. You will not see food for three days. And you're fasting and praying, God, help me. God, I'm a liar. God, I'm a liar. God, I am a liar. I'm not supposed to be a liar when I'm a Christian. And at the end of those three days, it is not only the lie that is beaten, but you find yourself even closer to God. Failure can make you into a powerhouse. God is good. Amen. Ah, yeah. Number five, complacency. Complacency, this one, the easier word is arrival mentality. Sema arrival mentality. Arrival mentality. We call it complacency. This was my own warning. This one was my warning very, very well. I am afraid of this one very well. Now, go kitu. And the reason I'm so much afraid is this one is even the weakness of my community. I come from Luoland originally, but I'm raised in Kikuyuland. That is why I speak both languages. But now, the people from my land there, hallelujah, wanakapatanga pesa, they get money, and they buy Mercedes Benz. God is good. And they buy Mercedes Benz, and they enjoy that blessing, forgetting that there is tomorrow. They, you remember recently the Maybach was the Mercedes Maybach that was seen on Thicker Road, and another day, in two months later, it was on, being auctioned. That one is my people. <laughs> God is good. I know there are many people of mine here, so I'm not uh, I'm not abusing you, I'm, because I'm also on the inside there. That one, Pakani Longeleshwa, I was even spoken to in a dream. Take care of the complacency of your youth and of your people. Sauti likuja ibo in the dream, and you will prosper. Because, and God hates this thing. I, God hates complacency. You, I, you start celebrating what you've gotten. Remember that man that was told, hey, your life today will be demanded of you. He said, I've gotten, let me make Mary eat. He said, today your life, we are coming for you. I don't know, God hates this thing very, very well. And now it is a problem to many people who would have had great destinies. You start celebrating, whatever you've been given is a seed, but you make it into bread. You have been given, you've get, got, gotten, you know, one thing that I really bless the Lord for in, in the area of finances is that I had promised God that the day he gives me a million, I will give it to him as a seed. And when my first million, I gave it as a seed. Blessed be the name of the Father. And I know that one will speak for me. And I know that fights for me. That one saves me. God is good. I know it speaks. But now my people have this weakness. God is good. 
my people, you know us, God is good. You get, you get 10,000 shillings. Ni kule mboga kenyeji na 10,000 shillings. Can I eat vegetable of tradition? With 10,000 shillings. <laughs> but you see, what will please, be pleasing unto God and what will show that you're a serious man is that you can maintain just your diet vile unakuanga, though money is there. But when you become complacent, you will enjoy, you over enjoy the small blessings, you will find yourself stopping. That is why you see there are some people who get a vehicle. You get a vehicle, uh, is, it, is it here? Uh, uh, let me not speak about it. Okay. You know there's, there's those vehicles that are modern now, that they are so small, you can carry it inside another vehicle. Uneze fungulia boot, ukaingiza, ukampatia lift. When you get that one, and on Sunday, you have to go to Langata because there's a, there's a, there's a family get together. And now since you have a car, walikuwa na kudharao, wacha wende wakuone pia. But before Jesus was Alpha and Omega, Sunday, hey, Sunday, TV yako ta news cannot see before. Because it is Sunday. The music, there, there must be worship 24 hours. But now when you get small car, you, Sunday is get together. Next Sunday, you hear your mom is sick at home. Before you would call them, talk to them, this one, ah, ah, you look for fuel. You are going there. But you know, inside, hidden inside of you, it's not only your mother's sickness, but that village people that you went to school with, you wanted to see your car. They must know that you're not walking. Sayuna tembea kama umeketi. Wanaitaji kujua hiyo. Hiyo vitu inakasirishanga mungu. Those things disappoint God. Sema, the best is yet to come. You buy that suit, you want to wear it very well, the best is yet to come. And I tell you the truth. You, I told you before. Now, I even forgot that I was wearing matching clothes. But I told you before that God told me to wear jeans and t-shirt. He told me that I must hate everything that takes the attention of people from God. Because even me when I started, I was that way. Italian suit, my friend. Tiny menyonga kama mtu wamekufa. Ata jua iwake aje. No matter how much the sun was, I would just wipe myself. But I, I, that was a, I came from Voi, Voi, these, these people from their church, Kinarita's where they come from there. Man of God, it was suit. Man of God, the t-shirt namna gani. Suit. So that is the culture that I went into. And the suit should have that small nyadog inside. Nyagok. This one, of inside. I don't know how you call it. That chongingos, you understand? It's called what? Eh. <laughs> Hallelujah. It must be there, otherwise. And it must come. Pananuno city is silly. You buy from town, my avenue. Vanuse. That was me. So when God, I, but today I come to realize. Because even when I'm dressing, so long as that, so long as imeshika kalai ni kidogo tu na ina Chris, aina Chris, na ata kama Chris, so long as my mind is there, God, I still, I told them miracle service. God, everybody can receive a miracle. I, 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 there's a day I found myself with different socks. <laughs> because the attention is no longer there. God is good. The attention is no longer there. Hallelujah. It's a sign of maturity. You look at uh, Prophet Kakande, he, most of the time he wears broken suit. Attention naiko apo. Hallelujah. He has gone too high to care about clothes. Gone too high to care about what you see. T.B. Joshua never used to wear Suti kwa akiva suti kumpaka tangaze today I'm dressed like you. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. But you see small blessing. Now you you don't have the anointing is not enough. The anointing is not enough. The miracles are not enough. The revelation of the word of God in us is not enough. But you you suit like this. Co complacency is not good. It stops people from growing. Iweke kwako. Hallelujah. When you get a hundred thousand. Remind yourself that the best is yet to come. When you get one million, remind yourself the best is yet to come. There was a, there's a, a music artist now. He's still here. I will not mention his name. One, one day, he was sponsored by Evangelist Teresia Orimo to go to America. Those days when we were still uh, young, early 20s. When he came from America, he mentioned this. He said this with his mouth. 
that I've gone to America, now the only thing remaining is going to heaven. I've conquered. And there was never a hit from him ever again. <laughs> take care. Tell your neighbor, take care. Yeah. If you get a husband, stop, don't troll people that don't have a husband. Hallelujah. Mambo sister. Mambo you mambo ya. Ya spinster. Stop trolling people. Husbands become alcoholic. God is good. I, one day there was a man who, a young man went to take the, the, the lady, and goes and tells that your old man, hey, I've found somebody to marry. I've come to share them to you. And the old man tells him, <laughs> willing to donate his wife. Hallelujah. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Complacency. God is good. Let God remain God. Let money remain in the pocket. Let husband be there to walk with. Let husband not take the place of God in the heart. Anything. Let small blessing not take you from the presence of God. Say my amen. amen. I mention as I go, physical laziness. Physical laziness. This one makes people fall and thus need second chances. Physical laziness. You know, you know procrastination is an attack from the devil. You keep postponing things. It is an attack from Satan. It gives you laziness. Hallelujah. You want, to go, you want to close your shop, but when I come here, when I speak prosperity, you want to receive it. God is good. Somebody wants to open their shop at, at 8 o'clock, you want to come at almost lunchtime. God is good. The Bible says this in that book of Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4. The sluggard craves and gets nothing. But the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. The desires of the diligent, diligent worker. God is good. Can I give you, let me tell you an example of this one when God was training me practically. You see, when I expect to get money when I preach in the natural, people will give and I will have something. But then I came to discover something. There are nights that I would take to edit, to do the editing myself. I spend my night working. I came to discover that when I take that time and I work, somehow by morning, I would have so much money. Somebody had made my PayPal. Somebody had sent money from where. God would just touch people. So you see, I'm pushing myself, working hard. And my people should understand now why I work hard. I spend, it is very rare for me to leave the office before 12, at night, midnight. Very rare for me to leave the office. I don't just, don't think I just come here to preach and I pray. I work. Hallelujah. I listen to the editings. I, I, I correct the editings. If you see those short clips that are there and they have frames and they have music, I do all of them, me, myself. I edit for the TV. When everybody has gone home and they've slept half of the night, that is when I tie my seatbelt and I'm on the highway alone, going home. I work hard. And I came to discover, when I work hard, God touches people who don't even know what I'm doing. But because the provision comes from heaven, it happens. God is good. I used to ignore the present worship. There's a season I used to ignore them. Then I also discovered that when I come now and I sit there, no, that is not good. Okay, do it like this, do it like this. I came to discover also, somehow, it will come like twice, or, tw twice the amount that I need to even give them fair. When I come and I'm diligent and checking all the areas, there is a blessing that comes because it comes from God. But the sluggard, ngeka, ngeka rosio, Ngeka Tuesday. Ngeka is what I will do. You, 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 postponement is you. Even those deals that you're waiting for that are ripe, you find them bouncing. The Lord forbid. God is good. Now, this one, spiritual laziness, there's a physical laziness, spiritual laziness. I had talked about it. Spiritual laziness. Connect to God all the time in prayer. Connect to God. If don't, don't be too busy to pray. And I gave you that example of Smith Wigglesworth. Ukijipata too busy to 
pray. That is spiritual laziness. Temptation will come. If you ask many people who fell even into fornication and adultery, you, the first thing that went down is their prayer life. Wakati maombi inapungua, inapungua. You see, when you're prayerful, God is good. When you're prayerful, let me say a man is prayerful. Hallelujah. And uh, let's say you are prayerful and you're married. These are things that we have gone through, we know. Hallelujah. You are prayerful and you're married. If you are at that point where you are praying very, very well, a lady can joke with you. You will feel that in your heart. But if you're a man, the nature of man, and you're not prayerful, if a lady jokes at you, you must verify them. Mbaka umangalia. You must be, if you're not prayerful, the nature of man will cause you to, to verify. You will disqualify them for something, but you will find yourself you must verify. You will verify. But if you are at a point where your prayer is good, you will feel filth in your heart. You will feel shetani in your that is what will come from your heart. Shetan in common. But you see, if you continue sinking into prayerlessness, you who have been used by God, you who has been faithful to God, you will find yourself falling and they will eat you as bread. God is good. If you, it is the prayer life that goes down fast. It is not easy to put a prayerful Christian in fornication. A prayerful Christian, ata ifike ni nyumba inafungwa, ata kuja lale kanisani. Ata tafuta vyovote. But if you're not prayerful, your prayer is not on point. That is when temptation will, will, will slay you. Amen? So spiritual laziness is a, ta- is a bad, bad attack. And you see, and be careful, because what the devil uses to destroy prayer life is introducing alternatives. If the kunawatu wamekuwa waombezi na juwa tawa kuapa, you be you are a serious prayer warrior when you had the katululu. The phone, you know the katululu? Eh? The katululu, you understand? You are a serious prayer warrior. Watch any kwambiye. The devil can even cause somebody to bless you with the phone. There is God's provision and there is Satan's bait. God is good. My people here, kina, we give you tell them, they will tell you. I told them that people that God brings close to me, one thing that happens to most of them, simu inaribikanga. You lose numbers, you lose the contact and something. Because this one, God is good. There are some people, when you start getting close to God, the devil, because he's the one who's tying your work, will send somebody to bring you a job just to get you out of prayer. Just to get you out of prayer. Not everything that looks good is a blessing. Who will know? If you give 1,000 years offering, who will know the 1,000 from a prostitute and the 1,000 from a, from a man of God? Nobody will know. God is good. At times, I am, if, if she, your problem, the devil can solve your problem to get you out of work. Remember he told Jesus Christ, bow down and I will give you. It all belongs to me. The devil can provide a handsome man with the money in the pocket. Because ameona umekuja. You have come. You have come. Apa, this is the line now. And if you go beyond this line, your family is saved. If you go beyond this line, your mother has stopped witchcraft. You go beyond this line, your sisters are getting married. Aneza kuletea mwanaume, a handsome one. A handsome one. Good face value. Aneza kuletea ta mweupe, mothongo. Aneza kuletea, uone Jesus. Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh. Too much, oh. Excess love. Kumbe ni mekupatia mizita tu wache kuomba. And you know, the line is here. You are about to get permanent breakthrough. But when you stop to pray, you start going back you start going back. When you start to pray, you will not jump and start there. You will start from the back where you have gone. Ukianza kujenga upya, utaanzia pale ulirudishwa nyuma. But it starts with prayerlessness. Prayerlessness, hallelujah. And don't base your Christian relation, your spiritual relationship on things. Hallelujah. Don't base your faith on improvement after prayer. Kibijosha used to say, 
that I've prayed and so such has, has happened. So God loves me. The devil will trap you. He will trap you. If you base your Christian experience on things that you receive, the transformation of situations only, no, that is not right. God is good. Hallelujah. Provoking a second chance. No, we are through with the reasons why people fall. Provoking a second chance. Provoking a second chance. Provoking a second chance. Provoking a second chance. Oh, it's already 12, so just mention and just touch on them a bit. God is good. Self-realization. So my self-realization, remorsefulness, and brokenness. God is good. Unajigundua. Hallelujah. You discover who, you discover your mistake. Your, and I say at times the mistake is not even seen. At times the mistake is just complacency, not necessarily sin. You discover your mistake. Dis learn to evaluate yourself. Tell your neighbor, evaluate yourself. When a business has fallen, and this one is one of my great strengths. Hallelujah. At times I've had people who disappoint me and do bad things to me, even in ministry. The reason why you don't hear me talk about enemies of things people, people have done to me, I always look for my own mistake in the dealing. And I say, Nimejichuna maskio. God is good. If you are a person that blames, if you are a person that is ever blaming, you will never grow. If you are a person who is always blaming somebody else, you will never grow. Look for your own role in the failure of that marriage. Because one, I'm a man of God. I sit with people here twice a week. And if people come for marriage, I have never heard anybody say, Lakini mimi nilifanya hii makosa. But if now, if you get, if somebody comes and gives you the reason why the marriage is breaking, and then their other partner comes, utatubu wata kuombea wiyo wakwanza. You will repent for praying for the first one. God is good. Especially this area of marriage. When you talk about disappointment in business, you, I, ha, I hear people telling me, the business when I started, it was doing very well. When it was doing very well, then all of a sudden, ikaisha too. Ikaisha too. Those are the words they use. It just got finished. Look at it. What are the systems that were in place when things were going right? What did you change? What can you notice from yourself that you changed the point you started noticing things going wrong? It could have been your prayer life. Could have been the way you do your business. Could have been the way you talk to clients. Hallelujah. Your husband was so good. He loved you so much. What was the version of you that you presented to him in that season when he was good? What was the version of you? Before we got married and even the first year was just okay, what was the version of you that you used to see? You used to wash his clothes. Hallelujah. You used to cook for him. After one year, you started becoming democratic. Democracy. Kwa hii nyumba ni kusaidia. Tunafaa kusaidiana. Ndawa ni kusaidiana. Mimi ni kifuwa. Nisaidia kupika yu gali. Eh, me I tell you the truth. Mine is still the way it started eight years ago. Because I neither cook no cook, cook no wash clothes. <laughs> the picture that was presented is the picture that is still there. God is good. So you should self-realization. You see, many, many people have anointing in everything that is proper, but practices are what are taking us down. Si wepo nitabia. The presence of God is with you, but your character. You know, Judas has the presence of God. The Bible says that when he was sent with the other disciples, they raised the dead. So the presence was there, but he loved money. God is good. That was a character for him to work on. He loved, anointing was there. Presence was there. Grace to resurrect the dead was there. But now character. Hallelujah. You learn. And I tell this even to my daughters and my sons. You are praying to God for marriage. 
work on the package that that person will receive. Because receiving that, marriage is two-way. If you receive and that person has not received, trouble is coming. Hallelujah. You will receive, yes, I have a husband. But if that husband has not received a wife, trouble is coming. Uliza wa mama wa mama wa mekoma. Uliza wa zewa mekoma. They will tell you that marriage, no matter how good you are, marriage comes, the success of marriage starts at the point now you start adjusting and not only making moves to change that other person. Wakatu nanza ku adjust. That is when marriage settles. When we learn to adjust, accept. Blessed be the name of the Father. And you learn to also adjust yourself. Say my amen. Hallelujah. So that self-realization is a very important part. If you're going to ask God for a second chance, because now there's somebody here, marriage broke, and I'm praying for you. But what has changed between the time that that marriage broke and today? If you're still blaming that man, you have not discovered your own role, you may not be ready to get married, even again. If business went down and you have not realized your own mistakes in that business going down, you are not ready for another business. If it went down, if you are still blaming economic condition and corona and ETC, did corona finish everybody? No. Oh. Did corona finish everybody? No. God is good. Hallelujah. Self-realization, that is number one. Blessed be the name of the Father. Then we have, God is good. Hallelujah. Then remorsefulness and brokenness. This is where your mistakes touch the spiritual realm. This is where your mistakes touch the spiritual realm. God is good. At times the, do the devil sends, you've had this, this deliverance all over, where a woman, if you sleep with them, you're financially stable, everything will get finished. There was a case that, like that one here on Friday. Hallelujah. So your business got destroyed after sleeping with this person. Now you want another business. Are you remorseful over that mistake? And you need to break before God. And this brokenness is what gave Jonah a second chance. Hallelujah. He got broken before God and asked for mercy. And the beauty of, of, of being a child of God, when God restored him, God gave him the same message and sent him to the same people, and now he had breakthrough. Vunjika bondeka. Lakini pia jigundue. Jigundue. And that one that I've spoken, that one is for the body of Christ. If many people are looking for divine intervention. When what is stopping that divine intervention is the package that you are right now. The package that you present. Who you are mentally, in your heart. Who you are is the hindrance, not spiritual. Say my amen. So for me, you hear... I had this, I corrected myself. I made the mistake of uh, letting people run the affairs of the TV so much the first time. They were there and they edit and I would just sit there and make noise. Hallelujah. Then one day when I was listening to Oyedepo, Oyedepo says, that you cannot oversee what you don't see. Enda kazini yata kwa nafanyikazi. Enda pale ufike weni boss, jiangalilie. Don't just leave it to people. Don't just leave it to Go to work yourself. Hallelujah. You cannot oversee what you don't see. Run. Run your things very, very well. Make every effort to run your things. So transformation is there. So that was a, a lesson for me. So that is the point where I, I, I made that transformation, that I must divide my time between prayer and working. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have talked about diligence. Diligence, I explained that, just put it as a point, diligence. You need to make yourself a diligent worker. I've just talked about it here. Hallelujah. Then add value. Provoking a second chance, add value to yourself. Or I add value to myself.
add value to yourself. Somebody sent me 64 books yesterday and tells me, man of God, I know you love to read. Hallelujah. I, I really laughed at the message. I, told her, I, told, I sent him a message and told him, I hope you also read. <laughs> you know what he replied? He told me, I hope so too. <laughs> he told <laughs> Hallelujah. He sent me 64 books, serious books that I've been looking for. I tell him, I hope you also read, and he tells me, I, I also hope so. Meaning, yeah, kusoma bado ijamuingia. God is good. Access light. Access light. Make sure you're improving yourself. Don't wait for conditions. Don't wait for favorable conditions. Do what you can now to improve yourself. Don't wait for favorable conditions. Don't wait for favorable conditions. We, this Smith Wigglesworth that raised 23 people from the dead, he's one, he used to say that uh, if the Holy Spirit is not moving, I will move him. So this, there's a person that uh, he found on the table. He found this person in a casket. They were ready to now to bury him because the person died when he was out of town. When he came, so-and-so died, and he said, no, that person is not yet going to. And he found him now. They, they, are just, they were now ready to bury him. And he prayed the first time, the second time. This guy is refusing. This smith took this body and put the body on the wall. You are resurrecting. <laughs> in Jesus' name, and this guy fell. Jesus' name fell. Then Jesus' name, this guy sneezed. Hallelujah. Move. Move things. Move. Cause things to move. Hallelujah. And there are times you are adding value on yourself, but akuna kitu kinaonekana kinabadilika. When you add enough value, itakuja kuonekana. If you look at the best presenters, even on TV, they will tell you how, how many hours they put to practice when they were themselves, alone. Ana, 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 ana hoji mtu wa yuko kwa kamera yenye haiko. God is good. I met, there's a guy who came to look for work here last week. A guy who has worked with, uh, he's worked with uh, several sessions. And I used to think that this guy speaks Kiswahili because he's in Mombasa. But then he, he when I discovered that he grew in Langata and everything, I asked him, how comes? It is not possible that you grew in Nairobi, but there's no element of Sheng in your tongue. And he told me that I made the conscious decision when I was young that I was going to be a Kiswahili presenter. That I was going to be a Kiswahili presenter. So when he speaks, you think that he's born and bred at the coast, but Nairobi complete. Add value. God is good. Hallelujah. When I saw his work, I even forgot to ask him for his papers. Because he's good, and it is seen, and it is visible. He's just good. Hallelujah. You will see him. You're wondering if you, why you've not seen him, you'll see him. Hallelujah. God is good. Now, these two final points, I can say them without. Hallelujah. The two final points, God is good. Number one is consecration. Sema consecration. 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 Sema consecration. How would I say that in Kiswahili? Hallelujah. I think an easier word is set yourself apart. Set yourself apart. God is good. Be a vessel that the Lord is willing to bless and to work with. I remember one time, many years ago, there was a mistake that I was doing many years ago. And then I was doing a mistake not conscious that it was a mistake. So in the dream, after a night of prayer, T.B. Joshua appeared to me in the dream, and he was very angry. And he rebuked me very, very well. You see, when you act to be consecrated, you work on being a blessable vessel, a vessel that can carry the Holy Spirit, even when you're making a mistake, at times the Lord will send people to direct you. At times, you will bump into something because many times I bump into messages that I need to listen to. 
And I know there are people even here that you are in the middle of prayer asking, there are people here who are, you are in the middle of prayer asking God for somebody connected to TB Joshua in Kenya, then went to YouTube Nikatokeleze. There are people who are here that way. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, when you are consecrated, the Bible says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When you are consecrated, one thing that is with you is the presence of God. Now, the presence of God will lead you into corrections, even where you need to correct. The presence of God will send people to you. Amen? One thing that is happening with Heaven's TV, I know you are looking at the level, if you are a watcher of Heaven's TV, you know our graphics are, mm, now, you know the graphics are, mm, hallelujah, when you hear the present worship, the new one that is coming now, you will hear them and you, you know that, that you, you will say that is a, you will call your neighbor to listen to your church because of what is coming out there. Hallelujah. But one thing I tell you, these blessings of even people coming to life, coming to be added to me, they come where it is consecration that I'm working on. I will tell you something. The conditions may be of the workers. You know, we've gone through a lot in the last one year. The, the, the conditions of the workers that we had last year, it was limiting to this ministry. So the guy who's doing our graphics now came to church last year. When he came to church last year, I remember there's a scripture that is coming to me. He came to church and I prayed for him and his children got healed. But he went back home and was not even interested in helping us. Now, there have been this one go, this one go, this one come, this one come. And the conditions of the ministry, there comes a place where there's some small confidence even in the spirit. Then this guy comes about six months later. And when he comes to church, he says that, man of God, I want to help you and I don't want you to pay me. Somebody that is worth paying, somebody that is worth paying, there's a job offer on the table here in Kenya for 120,000 shillings, but he says, I will not pay, I don't want you to pay me. But you see, he was there many, he was there many months ago. But the spiritual condition, the consecration, did not allow for that level of blessing in my life. I would, have been, I would have received as a dog. I would have received as a dog. You get blessing that is not fit for you. Say my amen. Hallelujah. Now, after the tumult and the... There's some of you who know something, that thing, many things that happened a few months ago and there was a shake-up in the ministry. Then this guy, that is the time he comes to church. By the way, September, now I want to be a member. And now I want to help you. But I know what has happened. It is the spiritual conditions. So you see, there are those who depend on their own craftiness to provide for them. But then there are those of us who depend on God. There are provisions of God that will come to a consecrated vessel. God is good. A consecrated vessel. A consecrated vessel. After the way you handle your business, God is good. The way you handle your business. In this premises, Upper Palipa TV, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock is time for prayer. God is good. So you, you know that this is for God. It has to be dedicated for God. And that one, that is, my enemy now is not the enemy. Anybody that wants to mess that one shall be my enemy. That is my tempter. God is good. But when you, you focus even that your business, end up early. Don't play secular music kwa kinyozi at indite wa atu. Have you ever noticed that Christians have a, some Christians have a problem with secular music, yes? But have you realized that the people of the world, they don't have a problem with gospel music? What do we have a gospel? It helps them their conscience. But you find a Christian, 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 you want to beat... Rich Spice is the one who is spicing that place. It's because it is God who wants to bring people. A client can come to that kinyozi and change your life. But the conditions therein are not godly. Put worship, consecrate your business, consecrate wewe mwenyewe. Let yourself be a vessel that is, you can talk to God and tell God, you know me. How I am walking before you with wholehearted devotion. Mungu nafanyanga makosa, 
God, I, but I'm walking before you with wholehearted devotion. I am your vessel. Say my amen. amen. The final, final point is what you call adoption. Adoption now, this one goes to that person that is not born again. You want a second chance, you want a miracle. God wants your heart. Hallelujah. Adoption. If you are in the world, you are backslidden. Because I know there's somebody who's backslidden that is here. I'm totally backslide upper, but then you have seen the miracles on Heaven's TV on YouTube, and you are here for a miracle. Let me tell you, the first place that God wants is your heart. And I told you that God told me during the season of Corona that so long as I'm, I'm, I'm saving you, I will bless you. So long as you are counted as my child, I will bless you. That is the foundation for everything. Adoption. Because if you're going to have a prayer life, which kind of a prayer life will you have when Jesus Christ is not Lord and Savior of your life? Now this one, take it even to your family. Take it to your family. You, you have a, a sister, a brother that you're trusting God for their transformation. Send them clips. Send them short clips that will encourage. Short videos, that there are two-minute videos that are there, that will be Joshua, the Prophet Alan, the Nani, they are, they are there. Send them and pray on those clips before you send them that God touch their heart. Because there are some people that God is not willing to answer their prayer for them because they are still referred to as dogs. They have not accepted Jesus. The greatest prayer, hata kama ni mtoto wako, na unajua nasumbuka juhana kazi, make a stop. Pray for their salvation. Tell God that now, if I go to heaven, and I find myself in heaven, and this child of mine goes to hell, you ni familiar kweli? Akipata kazi yapa naende kuzimu, gets a job but, but goes to hell, that is not family. Because hapa ni miaka kidogo, there is eternity. Hallelujah. The true family is if we are able to go with them into that next level of life, which is heaven. So adoption, that is the bedrock for everything. And many of us here, we lost things and lost our salvation. You need to get your salvation back before you start chasing after things. There are many here, never accepted Jesus. There are many even watching online. You have never accepted Jesus, but you are sending prayer requests. The prayer requests that come to this phone, watch it. I got one in the morning today from Nigeria. Oh. Your, your, God has no problem giving you this blessing, but God wants to save your soul. T.B. Joshua used to say it, the first place to prosper is in our spiritual lives. Say about my spiritual life. My spiritual life. So today, no matter how, if you love your mother very, very well, the best thing that you can get for your mother is salvation. Pray for conviction. Waombe. Waombe waukoke. Hallelujah. If you really love them, if you're only praying for them for a job, but you don't care that they're smoking, that they're drinking, that they're patronizing witches and wizards, then you don't love these people. If you truly love them, you want to spend eternity with them. If you truly love them, you want to help them escape hellfire. And me also, I love you so much. I love you so much that even as I pray for you, I finish preaching, but even as I pray for you with all of my heart, and I'm not going to ask you for a seed to pray for you, and even when you have a testimony, I will not ask you for a seed, but the place that God wants, the thing that God wants first of you is your name to be written in the book of life. Some of us here, your name is written in the book of life, then a question mark was there because of this life. That question mark in Itaji talking. When you are adopted, you start working on consecration. You start working on adding value. You understand how it goes? You start from down. Adoption, consecration, Addition of value, prayer. Now prayer should be there. Prayer should be there, kabisa. Because as Jesus said, that is what will stop you from temptation. And what the devil uses to take away the chances of people is temptation. So you find yourself needing a third, a fourth, a seventh, a seventh chance. And Jesus loves you. Clap for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know that more, many are Christians and you're born again, but I also know there's somebody that is here that you need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Najokunam tu hapa, 
Hauna uhakika kwamba Yesu akija sasa unaenda mbinguni. You are not sure that if Jesus came now you would go to heaven. If you are not sure that you are going to heaven it means that life could still prove to be trouble. There is somebody you've never accepted Jesus. Wewe hujaifika hapo ukaomba hiyo ombi ya kwamba Yesu nakupokea uwe bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yangu. And there is somebody here you may be say that prayer but the life you live now you doubt if you are really still being called a child of God. Now we are going to pray and God is going to release second chances for people here. God is going to release breakthroughs for people here. There was a testimony that we had here on, fr- on Friday. Madam Lucy, I've not seen her probably watching online today. Madam Lucy has a school. And in the church service one day I told her that another business is coming. And uh, she said, ah, how now? Even the one she has is, dis- is difficult to run. Now she has a school up to class four. And uh, there was no place to expand. I don't know class three or class four. No place to expand. And then somebody came and built a school behind her. Then you remember last week I told you, go and uh, the Lord had told me to sleep praying, carrying the anointing water. I told you to go and try. And she tried. And in the middle of her sleep, she dreamed that somebody had given birth in her hands. When she woke up, hallelujah, somebody calls her and says that they're the owner of that school that is behind her. It is just a wall that is separating them. And her school is too full, no place to take people. But this person has only 25 students. And this person calls her that she's the landlord and she's the one who put the school there and she wants to give her the school. It was a testimony here, you will see it. God is good. Possibility. God is good. Upper Paliuko, there is great possibility. But the place we start, are you a son? Because here you're not supposed to receive as a dog. You're supposed to receive as a son. God is good. Now, those ones that are here, kama uko hapa na uja okoka, I want you to turn your life away from the devil. I want you to turn your back against the devil because the devil is the one who brings temptation. Actually, the temptation, he punishes you. I want you to turn your back on him. If you're here and you're not born again, I want you to just take a step of faith. Come here, I pray for you. Come, I pray for you, for you to receive Jesus. Don't wait for, don't wait for your neighbor. If you're here and you're not born again, take that move of faith and step forward and I'm going to pray for you to accept Jesus Christ. Leo, once maisha mapia, even when we are saying second chance, you receive a second chance that God will protect. If you're here, come forward. If there's anybody that is not born again, kuja, kuja. Nataka ni kuombe Yesu akamate maisha yako. Nataka ni kuombe Yesu akuite mtoto wake. Nataka ni kuombe leo Yesu akuite wake na unajua Yesu anapigania anga wake. Yesu anapigania walio wake. Kama ni kumrudia Yesu pia kuja. Kama ulikuwa umeokoka ukawacha you are saved and the relationship broke come. When you receive Jesus na hiyo ingine yote utapokea. Just come forward. Thank you, Jesus. I see the people who are really pressed. They are running outside, literally. Msaidia kiti ya ukai hapo. Msongeshe tu karibu na madhabao. for them. They are, wanafanya maamuzi mazito. Wanafanya maamuzi mazito. Wanafanya maamuzi mazito. Hayo ni maamuzi mazito. Hallelujah. So huyu ni mtu hata kuitisha mbegu ni kwa hapa kukufunza ukweli. Na kukupatia ukweli. Na kisha ni kuombe. Na kisha ubarikiwe. Bila kwa kumkataa Yesu, unajua kumkataa Yesu awezi hata wengi hawasemangi wamemkataa. Kumkataa Yesu ni simply kutompokea ndani ya maisha yako. 
kama umejampokea hapo ndio kumaanisha kwamba umemkataa umemgeuzia mgongo wako There is somebody that is still fighting Come and make it right come and make it right The gift of sonship Yule mwanamke akambiwa baraka ya watoto aipewi umbwa Kwa nini uitwe umbwa na kuna nafasi ya kuitwa mwana Upokee baraka za mwana na kupatia nafasi bado umgeuzie shetani mgongo wako Jesus name naenda kuwaombea usiku umefungiwa nje naenda kuwaombea isifike nyumbani uanze kujiambia ningechukua hiyo nafasi usiende ukakumbushwe vile amekuinukia ukajiambia labda ningeokoka ingekuwa tofauti nisifungie mtu let me not close the door and to na usiaibike kama uko hapa huyu mwenye anahubiri hapa alikuwa mlevi wa ajabu <laughs> don't feel ashamed don't feel embarrassed the one that is preaching here alikuwa mlevi wa ajabu mimi kama niliyoshwa ninafikiri niliyoshwa mara mbili walirudisha kwa maji wakasugua vizuri don't feel embarrassed don't the one that is here cannot judge you thank you jesus so we are going to pray i hope nobody there is left so ntaomba kwa Kiswahili and then i will pray in english for the benefit of those who are following from all over and those who don't i don't know maybe there's somebody here who does not understand kiswahili so tunaomba kwa kiswahili kwanza alafu kizungu so mimi nitaomba wewe urudie kutoka kwa moyo wako na Mungu ataenda kukutendea sema bwana yesu mimi ni mwenye dhambi nioshe na damu yako takatifu unifanye mwana wako futa jina langu kutoka kwa kitabu cha mauti Andika jina langu kwa kitabu cha uzima wa milele. Naamini ulikufa na zaidi ya yote unaishi kwa sababu yangu. Nakupa maisha yangu na nakupa roho yangu. Na sasa natangaza na kiri kwa kinywa changu. Yesu ameniokoa. Nimeokoka. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Clap for them, clap for them. That is the greatest decision of life. Hallelujah. Then I pray for you English. Those who are following and this is English. So I'm praying for you giving you a chance to make yourself to be counted as a child of God, to be accepted as a son. So you pray this prayer after me, Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. Wash me with your precious blood and make me your child. Erase my name from the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. I believe that you died and are now alive for my sake. I give you my heart. I give you my life. And I now declare that I am saved. Jesus is my savior. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Clap for them very very well. Clap for them very well. Clap for them very very well. Hallelujah. And God is good and his goodness you will see in your life in Jesus name.